All right, you lovely lot, how's it going? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I do hope you lot are all doing well today, man. I really do hope that. And welcome back to Chelsea News, the daily series where I look across football media, see what people, broadcasters, publications are saying about Chelsea Football Club, consolidate it, present it to you, my friendly subscriber, and pretty much give you my opinion on it. And then of course, more importantly, ask for your opinion and then chat to you guys down in the comment section. So we're back, silly season episode 741. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about three stories, two players, and then just really a story regarding Project Restart. First off, Alex Tellej, is he back in the conversation? What's going on with this player? Is he going to PSG? Is he going to Chelsea Football Club? Apparently, Chelsea were on the brink of signing him, then PSG had nipped in and looks like they had got him, essentially, and then apparently Chelsea are in the lead again. We do know reporters and lawyers and people were saying Chelsea are doing business with Porto. We all assumed it was for long-term target Alex Tellej, but who knows? Maybe it was for Jesus Corona. We're going to talk about that. The owner of Lille Football Club over in Ligue 1 has been saying yes, multiple offers have come in for Victor Ossimhem. Maybe one is Chelsea, but he's going to cost a lot of money. I personally really like the player, but maybe not for the money? Or at least the reported gargantuan sum that he might cost. And I say gargantuan because I'm thinking of the financial climate in this pandemic. It just sounds like a lot. What happened to this buyer's market, man? And also, this one's funny. The Premier League are considering piping in FIFA 20 crowd noise for the resumption of football. Now, it sounds silly and funny, and to be honest, it is. But it could work, and I'm going to tell you why and offer you my opinion on that situation. Anyway, a lot to crack into today, guys, and if you want daily content regarding Chelsea Football Club, I would urge you to subscribe to this channel if you've not yet done so, but hey, only if you want to, man. If you do, hit the bell notifications icon and want to help me out, that would be cool. Why not drop a like on this video? All right, mate, let's get into it. Right, let's start off with Alex Tellej, the left back of Porto, who Chelsea have long been looking at. That's right, Chelsea have been considering the purchase of this player for a while, even before they bought Emerson Palmieri. Now, it was reported a while ago that Chelsea had started doing business with Porto, and we were all thinking, right, done and dusted, mate. He's only got 12 months left on his deal. He's even got a buyout clause that's fairly reasonable. Chelsea won a left back. He is decent. We're buying Alex Tellej. He'll be first in. We all thought that. But in silly season transfer world, nothing can happen. And then last minute, everything can happen. So you never know what's going on, really. Like I say in every episode, I am just a Chelsea fan like you reading the news. This series is not about me presenting you what's going to happen. Really just discussing what the headlines are saying. And they were saying that he looks like he was going to PSG. They used their financial muscle to come in and Chelsea were uncertain thinking about the likes of Ben Chilwell, Nicola Tagliafico apparently and PSG reportedly came in hard and it looked like they were gonna secure Telege and still might. But reports today are saying Chelsea are back in the lead of said transfer race. Now personally I am at the point where I don't really care who Chelsea sign out of, to be honest, Telege, Tagliafico, or even Ben Chilwell. That's right, Ben Chilwell, who was in poor form for a while, who may cost too much money. I do see the benefit long term in buying Ben Chilwell. Especially if the gaffer Frank Lampard wants him. I kind of want to trust the project, you know, trust the manager. You want him, have him. Build your legacy, build your project, nurture this team you want to build. To be honest, Tagliafico looks pretty good in terms of his engine and how he functions on the pitch, I think they could work quite well with this current Chelsea squad, but at the same time, Telege is a proven good player who can score goals, get up and down, and there's a reason Chelsea have been looking at him for a long time. So if indeed they have gone ahead of Paris Saint-Germain again and they could buy him, cool, get it done, please, please. Thing is, man, we should all just chill because Chelsea, even though they did do some dumb transfer business that same window where they got Danny Drinkwater and co, Generally, over the last few years, Chelsea haven't been that bad. It's just the drink water Zappa Costa window where, you know, you know. So really, I trust the club. And all we can do in the meantime is monitor the headlines and hopefully somewhere there is some truth in there from some reputable journalists and we can see developments much like we saw with Hakim Ziyech. That snowballed rather quickly. And if you look around that time, I did a lot of videos on him because it was news I was grabbing onto. So hopefully we see something like that soon. 
could be Alex Tellej. Before we talk about the Premier League going full FIFA 20, let's talk about Victor Osimhen. The young Lille centre forward is incredibly good in my opinion. He looks like a complete forward or centre forward 9, in my opinion. Frank Lampard likes him a lot. He's obviously spoken of his respects for him prior to playing Lille in the Champions League. He said some very positive things about the player and his story and was quoted saying he has everything. So we know Frank Lampard likes him. We know he is a striker in demand. The Lille owner Gerard Lopez has actually come out and said yes, there have been multiple offers for the player. He was quoted saying maybe one of these clubs could be Chelsea Football Club. But the, he leads on to a further point saying to let this player go, it would have to be close to the valuation of what we sold Nicola Pepe for. They sold Nicola Pepe for £72 million. Pounds. Again, like I said at the top of the video, what happened to this buyer's market? I mean, surely Lille's resolve can be tested by just a generally large bid. I mean, Mauro Icardi was looking to go to PSG on a permanent for like 65 million or something, and a deal has been struck for 25 million pounds. Less than that. That's a good example of the buyer's market, such as Cy Phillips tweeted here. I'd really like Victor Osimhen. It might cause a bit of a problem with Tammy because he'd probably expect to start and then sort of leaves you in a peculiar position there but in terms of the striker himself I think he's very very good would I want Chelsea to pay 72 million pounds for him or thereabouts probably not so Chelsea do need a striker they need backup they need help in the front line with that senior young or whatever whatever shape it comes in something to freshen up something to maybe replace Michy Batshuayi we'll have to see I'll keep you guys posted here on football therapy as any stories develop just make sure you swing by daily and you are subscribed Right, let's talk about FIFA fun. <sighs> so yeah, the headline is, I was about to say Chelsea, FIFA or the Premier League are considering piping in the audio tracks from FIFA 20, the crowd noises, into either the stadium or I guess the broadcasting, like the actual data being sent to the, data being sent to the TV. They just edit it into the broadcast. Why do they need to try and make that more complicated? Now, before you all recoil and cringe at this prospect, it could work, man. There's nothing more haunting and eerie than an empty stadium sound of the ball being kicked, of like shouts from, you know, the physios and stuff. It just looks so training game. And when the Premier League resumes and they've got all the editing pre-match, post-match and, you know, graphics, you get hyped for the Premier League. And although you see the players that you know and love, it could still be a bit like underwhelming, dude. I watched the broadcast on a channel <laughs> that were playing crowd noises in the background they were had like the generic crowd chanting singing it was really really good actually and when a goal scored there's applause and i think even they had someone like mixing and like the eq level as well but mixing like applause and cheers when a good pass is made when a good tackle is executed and suddenly because it was all legitimate recorded crowd noise i felt integrated into this experience and i didn't feel like I was watching a game behind closed doors anymore. You had to actually see the seats to remind yourself, oh yeah, this is an empty stadium. And if it tricks you, even for like a few minutes, then surely that's made the experience better. That's enhanced it, no. The truth is, man, for all you purists out there, this is not the Premier League trying to replace fans. You can't replace fans. This is trying to make the best of a bad situation at present. Do you see what I'm saying? And personally, man, I back it. Just until fans can get back into the stadium, they're going to, I think, vote this Thursday on this idea in a meeting somewhere with officials. But I don't know, I'm kind of into it. And I know they're already talking about like the FA Cup final having 20,000 people in Wembley, which is really interesting. 10,000 people on each side, which sounds like 20,000 people in one place sounds like a lot. But think about it, what's the capacity for Wembley? 80,000 more? So having, you know, a quarter of that in there, spaced out, socially distanced, with, you know, letting people in safely, it could work. And by the time the FA Cup final rolls along, the curve might be flattened more, the situation may have calmed, who knows? But when it comes to the whole crowd noise thing, I could probably get into it, but I'm keen to hear your thoughts and opinions on the FIFA 20 audio going into Premier League games for the broadcast. I'm back in it, what do you think? And also, I'm keen to get your thoughts and opinions on the situation with transfers. What do you think of Victor Osimhen? Do you think Chelsea should just look for a really, really cheap striker, or should they go in for a player like him, even if 
he's going to cost a lot of money. And what's your stance? What's your position on the left back situation? Get down in the comment section below and express yourself and I will be conversing with you, finding out your opinions and looking forward to hearing what the collective sort of stances really so get down there if you've enjoyed this content i've provided for you guys today i'd urge you and be thankful if you liked the video subscribe if you're new you're welcome to follow me on social media at football yannick on both instagram and twitter that's it from me you lot enjoy the football that's happening soon and i'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy talk i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chalk in my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby